Good morning to each one of you and welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, Today is the 33rd Sunday of the year. Next Sunday, the church will celebrate the feast of Christ the King. And with this, the church in a way closes one cycle of the year. And today's readings, the first and the third especially, speak about the end times, the end of the world. What will happen on that day? It will also be the end of our lives. So as we take part in this Mass, we ask the Lord to help us to prepare for that day when the Lord will come to take us up to Himself. We ask the Lord to be always be prepared for that day. But what times we have failed to think of that day or the end of our lives, and be living in a way as if we will live forever on this earth, we ask the Lord's pardon and His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my, my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Thank you. 
sing to God a song of glory. Peace he brings to people on earth. Worship be the King of heaven. Praise and bless his holy name. Glory, glory. Sing his glory. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. A reading from the prophet Daniel. At that time, Shall, shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who has who name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars for ever and ever. The word of the Lord. The response for the psalm will be, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Kindly repeat. Preserve, Preserve me, God, O God, for, for in you I take, take refuge. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup, you yourself who secure my lot. I keep the Lord before me always. With him at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Response. Preserve, Preserve me, God, O God, for, for in you I take refuge. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my flesh shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hell, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Response, Preserve, Preserve me, O God, for, for in you I take refuge. You will show me the part of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, bliss forever. Response, Preserve, Preserve me, O God, God, for in you I take refuge. A second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every priest stands daily in, at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time, a single sacrifice for sins. 
he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet, for by a single offering he has perfected for all time. Those who have been sanctified, where there is forgiveness of this, there is no longer any offering for sin. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Read the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the past in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out angels and gather his elect from four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From that fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch begins tender, and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will not pass away but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, it is interesting to note that as the ordinary cycles of the cycle A or cycle B or cycle C come to a close, the church reminds us with the readings of the end times. And when you hear the readings, as we heard just now, the first reading, the gospel passage, so also the other cycle, cycle A and cycle B, uh, we have mixed feelings. Uh, there are feeling of depression, of sadness, also there also feeling of happiness. And to use uh, Ignatian terminology, uh, we feel experience desolation or consolation. Desolation is absence of God. We feel sad, we feel remorse, we feel all those feelings that make us low. And consolation is presence of God where we feel very happy, excited. So I'm sure when you heard today's readings, the first and the gospel passage, you must have had the same feelings of maybe depression and sadness. On the other side, consolation. So you're a little confused, your mind is confused. What will happen on that day? We are worried because no one knows when that day will come, how it will come, so, so what situation will come, where we will be, whether we'll be sleeping or away, whether we'll be driving a car or we'll be uh, on a bike or we are walking, or, no one knows. That time will come. So are we prepared at this moment for that day? And therefore, we have to look at the readings. The readings, of course, are to be taken in a context. The first reading from the book of Prophet Daniel Let's go to the history of that time. At this time, the Jews were in distress, in sadness. So at this time, Daniel, in a way, um, gives them hope. And what hope? That the liberation is at hand. The Savior will come. 
Don't be so distressed. And you'll be, you'll be all delivered and you'll have so-called life eternal. The gospel passage, also in the context, is around 440, so-called AD. It's around uh, 40 years after the Lord died. Uh, well, before that, one of the things happened in Rome, in Jerusalem. There was a persecution by Nero. And the Christians were being tortured and tortured. At this time, Mark had written gospel to remind them that their liberation is here. But they were thinking of this, that imminent coming of Christ, second coming of Christ will come right now and then because of the passage of the gospel. So the readings of today, the first and the second away, should not confuse us. Should not make us depressed or sad, but rather give us consolation, happiness, because the Lord will come. But the question is, when he comes, in which list will I be? In the list where there is absence of God? Or in the list where there is presence of God? Matthew tells us in the own gospel about the parable of the of so-called the sheep and the goats. Those who are virtuous people, those who have done good business in life, those who have fed the Lord when he was hungry and met him when he was thirsty and gave water and so on. Or those who have refused him. Mark tells us about Christ coming on the clouds. In the Old Testament, God would be heard speaking to the clouds. So the, the image was very familiar to the Jews. And Christ dividing the people, the good and the bad. So the question with Ibn this mind is, where will I be? What must I do to be where I want to be? The question is not where will I be? It's where do I want to be? Do I want to be in desolation, permanently, in the absence of God? Or do I do be, want to be in the consolation where I will have God all the rest of my life? So the choice is left to us. It's not God who will decide about our future life. It's we ourselves who divide right here on this earth, decide where I want to be. It's like an athlete who wants to win the who wants to take a part in the race. Now, it's left to him to decide whether he wants to win the cup or medal or not. And therefore, the athlete will put on extra energy, a lot of practices and this and that, so that he wins the race. So it all depends on us today, where I want to be on that day. So what must I do then to have or to get what I want, to be in God's sights? First of all, let me experience God or see God in all things. God is ever present with us, is ever working with us. So I should meet him, recognize him in all life situations, be they when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm sick, when I'm in good health, or someone is in need, I go out of my way. So see God in all things, in all situations. Meet him there encounter him there and respond to his needs. Second is be ever prepared to meet the Lord on the day he had chosen for us. There are two incidents I know, or two anecdotes at this time come to my mind. One is about St. John Bosco. He said he was, he loved the youth, the youngsters, and he would say he was playing with them. Suddenly someone came and told him, if God were to come at this moment to take you to himself, what would you do? Without second thought, John Basso said, I will continue playing and being with the youth. So he was ever ready to meet the Lord. The second anecdote is about a caretaker of a large estate who keeps his master's property ever trim. House clean, estate clean. The traveler asked him, why is this? Are you expecting master tomorrow? He said, no, master will may come today itself at this very moment. Therefore, I'm prepared to meet a master who will come anytime. Therefore, we need to prepare ourselves as if the master is coming today and today will be our final judgment. So what must I do then to prepare myself? Nothing extraordinary. Just live simple Christian life. Following the commandments. Love of God. 
the love of the neighbor. And how when we do this, when we follow so-called, we call the laws or the commandments of God, and meeting God in all situations, in our happinesses, in our sadnesses, when, when you are sick, when you are not sick, oh, and living up to God's commandment of love of God and love of neighbor, I'm sure we will not be worried. I'm sure we'll be ever ready, prepared to meet the Lord when He comes. So when we hear these readings today, let's not get de de depressed or sad, but be happy because these tell us about a future life. Because when we live this world, we begin a new life, a life with God forever. So let's pray for all ourselves as we are taking part in this Mass, that we be, we be ever ready to meet the Lord and encounter Him, not just at the Eucharist, and encounter Him in all our situations and respond to His needs. Let's now arise and profess our faith in this loving God. I believe in, in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended, he ascended into heaven, heaven and, and is seated right now God, God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith and trust in the Lord, whatever intentions we have in our mind at this moment, we offer them to the Lord. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious that they may exhort, exhort the people to vigilance, taking into account the shortness of life and the suddenness of death. We pray to the Lord. Response, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. The first Sunday and the pre-ultimate Sunday of the liturgical year, coverage on the theme of watchfulness, that we may always keep within us the thought of encountering the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are terminally ill, that the thought of leaving the world may not frighten or grieve them, but the prospect of meeting the glorious risen Lord may give them hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the departed souls of our dear ones, friends and acquaintances, that they may enjoy the beatific vision in the company of angels and saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That we may not be shaken by the tragedies we face and the sufferings we undergo, but may, but may leave our lives by firmly placing our hope in the Lord Jesus, who suffered and rose for us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we have placed before you some of our needs, some of the needs of the world. There are many more deep in our hearts. Grant us what we need today to live a happy life and be prepared to meet to you, to encounter you when you call us to you. We may this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. And 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty, you obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask you this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. To your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through his Paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which we have freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy holy holy, holy. lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down a spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith when we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this, this cup, cup we proclaim your death o lord, lord until, until you come, come again. again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember also, brothers and sisters, they have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you 
through your son Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him O God almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever amen let us say the prayer the lord has taught us to pray our father who art, art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to the apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her unity and peace according with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit bless of each other the sign of peace lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace This is Jesus the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and our sins happy are we now who are called to share at his banquet Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but you only say the word and my soul shall be healed Since we cannot receive Jesus at this moment sacramentally let us make an act of spiritual communion and experience the presence of Jesus who is in us who dwells in our hearts who abides in us my jesus i believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar i love you above all things and i desire to receive you into my soul since i cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally come at least spiritually into my heart i embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen
let us pray we are partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery humbly imploring o lord that what your son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through christ our lord amen the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you all the father the son and the holy spirit amen the masses ended go to love and to serve the lord thanks be to god